Uh, hey, good morning. I'm Arnie Arredondo. I'm here this morning with Lake Michigan Angler, and uh, we're at the Root River Steelhead Facility taking coho salmon eggs. The Department of Natural Resources is here doing their uh, one of their uh, egg takes uh, for coho salmon. Uh, luckily, we got a beautiful day. We're fortunate to take a really in-depth look at the facility, the process, and, and talk a little bit about uh, what goes into the first step in, in getting these fish back into the lake. This morning, Brad Eggles from the Department of Natural Resources is gonna take us through that process. Hi, everybody. Uh, Brad Eggles here with the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources, Great Lakes District Fishery Supervisor. We're here at our Root River Steelhead facility to learn about how we take fish from the river, bring them up in the facility, take weights and lengths, spawn them, and make next year's fish out of fish that are returning this year. So the Root River Steelhead facility has been operational since 1994. It was a cooperative effort by the city of Racine, Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources, and Salmon Unlimited to build a facility here on the route where we see a lot of fish returning to the river both in the spring and the fall, and we needed a way to capture those fish so that we could collect eggs and make next year's fish. So we're on year 30 of its operation, and I have to say I've been here for all 30 years of its existence so far. We've caught hundreds of thousands of fish you know, in the facility over the years, and each and every year, it's a unique year. We're here in beautiful November day for coho spawning, one of our last coho spawnings of 2023. At the Root River Steel facility, our main two species that we collect eggs from are coho salmon in the fall and steelhead in the spring. However, we also have been a backup for Chinook salmon and we have captured brown trout in the facility as well. So it's really the four major species that we stock in Wisconsin, Chinook and coho salmon, rainbow trout and brown trout. Right at the Root River Silver facility, really on stage one, is really stopping the fish from migrating up the Root River. So we've built a dam, that's a two-part dam, that we're able to put stop logs in and actually stop the fish from going past us and continuing their spawning run up the Root River. And instead, they roll into our fish facility through a seven-step fish ladder. And that's really the first stage of getting them from the river, going up our seven-step fish ladder, up into the Root River Steelhead facility where then we can process these fish, fish. Yeah, the next stage, once they swim up the fish ladder, we trap them inside the fisheries facility where then we move fish around and eventually we're able to get them up into our fish ladder and bring them up for processing. So once the fish are in the knockout tank, we usually let them in there for three to five minutes, allows the carbon dioxide to work on them, they come, become a little easier to handle. And from there, we pull them out, and we usually put them on our measuring board. So we're getting lengths, we're checking for fin clips. That helps to determine maybe what year it was stocked. It gets measured and then weighed in terms of pounds. And that way we can track over time what are the weights and lengths of these fish coming back each fall or spring uh, to the Root River. Get a good comparison in terms of the average weight over years. Is it up, is it down, is it the same? So one of the things that we get with our, our length and weight and fin clip data, we can look at year class strength, how many fish are coming from particular stocking. We can also track it year after year in terms of average weight of a certain age of fish. And that might give us some indication in terms of the health of the fish, how big the fish are, how they're utilizing the forage out in the lake. And we have used that over time to look at when the weights are really low, there might be a forage issue on Lake Michigan. Conversely, when the weights are higher, maybe we have adequate forage for those fish out in the lake. So it's a good management tool to get our hands on literally thousands of fish each and every spawning run. So once we're done getting the biological data, there's really two endpoints. If we don't, if we aren't spawning fish that day, the fish go back into a recovery tank. That recovery tank is infused with oxygen. We let the fish uh, get upright and swimble, at which point we then fish them out of there and run them back down to our return pipe back down to the river. If we're, if we're spawning, we take those fish after lengths and weights, we give it to our fish culture staff, where one staff member will remove the eggs, and another staff member will fertilize the eggs with milk from the male, and then they go about their process to uh, water harden the eggs and prepare them for transport back to our, our hatchery system. Once the uh, fish are either stripped of eggs or stripped of milk, on some days, we have our fish health section here, and we'll take samples of 15 males and 15 females for fish health. That helps, helps us identify if there's any issues with the fish, 
if there's any disease that the fish have. Uh, if they're not here, like they aren't here today for this coho salmon spawning, we will strip the eggs and the milk, we'll put them back into the same recovery tank, let those fish recover for five to 10 minutes, and then pass them upstream, which is really our ultimate uh, goal here is to, we probably pass on average 88 to 90% of the fish that come into the facility, we then return back to the river, they continue their migration upstream, which provides a fishery for those that are fishing the Root River. Yeah, one of the things that's unique about the Root River Steelhead Facility is it's really a, a one-way stop for these fish. The design of this facility is once they, they swim up the fish ladder, they get into the facility, there's only one way out, and that's with the DNR staff extracting the fish out of the, the moat and then returning them to the river. So most facilities have a bypass channel where the fish can then swim on their own out back to the river. That's not the design of this facility, so it's really labor intensive to get all these fish out of the facility. And our main goal is to pass upstream, you know, 90% of the fish that come in the facility because we realize we're stopping the migration of fish through the dam that we have, and we want to put them back in the river for continued fishing. So we'll pass, like I said, probably upwards of 90% of all the Chinook, Coho, Brown, and Rainbows that come in the facility to continue to provide that fishery for anglers that are on the Root River. And as we know, uh, if you've been fishing for salmon and trout in Lake Michigan, the salmon are on a one-way trip. So once the fish are spawning condition for Coho and Chinook, they end up, uh, trying to spawn in the river, eventually die, and that's their natural life cycle. That's different than we have for the browns and rainbows. They will come in the river, they'll attempt to spawn, they'll go back out the lake. If they aren't caught again, they'll be back in here next year trying to spawn as well. So the trout are able to spawn multiple times where the Chinook and coho salmon, it's a one-way spawning trip for them. Yeah, so one of the things about our, our facilities that we have on for Wisconsin is that we usually are operate it two times during the year. In the fall, we start operation about mid-September for Chinook salmon. It then migrates into coho salmon, which concludes about the first or second week of November. And that's our fall spawning for Chinook and coho. In the springtime, depending on temperatures and how much water flow we have, that's when we collect steelhead. That's usually done from, I would say, March 1st through April 15th. We run this facility as well as a Basadnes and Angemus Fisher facility in Kiwani County for both coho in the fall and then steelhead in the springtime. So in the fall, we're probably operational for six to eight weeks, whereas in the spring, we're more operational in the four to six week time frame. So one of the things that you're seeing here today at the Root River facility is that we have our crews from Wild Rose Fish Hatchery and they're responsible for uh, spawning the fish and then we take those eggs back to a couple of different uh, hatcheries. Wild Rose Fish Hatchery in Wild Rose, Wisconsin. We also take fish back to Kettle Moraine Springs Fish Hatchery in Cascade, Wisconsin. Well, then they'll be there, the eggs will hatch, uh, eventually turn into fry, small fingerlings, and then we'll get stocked, depending on the species, either in the case of Chinook salmon in six to seven months, or in the case of coho salmon, like we're doing here today, they aren't gonna get stocked till spring of 2025. So they're actually in our hatchery for about 16 months. Steelhead are in our hatchery for about a year. So once they get back to the facility, our, our, our hatchery system, they will uh, tend to the eggs, pull off any dead eggs. They'll turn into fry, obviously, hatch out of the eggs. Small fingerlings eventually turn into yearlings when they're a year old. And then we stock them back into the rivers up and down the lakeshore. So we have a fairly complex uh, stocking program in Wisconsin where we're trying to stock all the counties from Kenosha all the way up to um, Marinette County in Green Bay with a variety of fish to provide a local fishery during spawning time for these fish. Yeah, so one of the things we're, we're always working with anglers is sort of a, a collaborative nature. And if you're out there enjoying these fish, uh, there's a lot of effort both on the department side as well as, as the stakeholder side to keep this program running each and every year. And if, so if you're, if you're out there and you see DNR staff collecting fisheries information, you know, talk to them, provide the information about how long were you out there on your trip, what did you catch. If you can spare the time, allow them to get lengths and weights off your sport catch. That helps the fish management. Obviously, uh, supporting the fishery each and every year and being advocates for this fantastic fishery. And I, I think it's one of the greatest in North America for sure, where right in our backyard in Lake Michigan, 
we have an incredible salmon and trout fishery that I think a lot of us take a lot of us take for granted. Not only on the fish side, but on the water side. If you've seen any news about parts of the North America that are don't have a lot of water, we have an incredible water resource here on Lake Michigan. That's not only for uh, sport anglers, but obviously the general recreational people of Wisconsin and the other states around the Great Lakes. We have to preserve this and you know, work all together, whether it's on fisheries, water quality, you know, to maintain this great water resource that we have. Yeah, I'd like to thank everybody for uh, you know, watching and learning a little bit about our Root River Stillet facility and how we take fish out of the river, bring them up from the facility, spawn them, and you know, make the next generation of fish. And if you're interested in coming down here, uh, obviously today it's a beautiful day here, November 13th, and we usually process on Mondays and Wednesdays in the fall. Same thing in the spring. So if you're looking for what we're doing, you can go to dnr.wi.gov and just search for Lake Michigan. Get on one of our Lake Michigan pages for the Root River Steelhead facility. You might want to check out our Bessadne uh, facility as well in Kiwani County or our Strawberry Creek facility. They're all on our main Lake Michigan webpage. You can learn about how many fish were processed, what processing days we're going to be there. Uh, and we're always happy to talk to people and walk them through and give them a little tour of what we're doing down here. I'd like to thank Brad Eggles and the complete staff here at the Root River uh, facility here. It's open to the public. You can come down and take a look at it. Uh, but it's just one of those things where this is the front end. We'd like you to see all the hard work that goes in. So we as sportsmen have, uh, have such an incredible fishery and, and a great resource.